Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. It's being called a danger in the neighborhood, and now one Pontiac homeowner wants the city to do something about it. The issue, a bent guardrail in front of her home that she says has been hit now by a number of times by speeding drivers. Can you imagine? Well, the guardrail is located a stop sign at the intersection of Adelaide and West Howard. As Victor Williams shows us, the homeowner wants something done before someone gets hurt. Well, the woman that lives right here in this house says this is no way to live and you can see the condition of this guardrail that's right outside of her home. It shows you just how dangerous this area can be with this being the result of an accident. So now the homeowner is saying she just wants the city to do something about this before it's too late. I'm afraid that kids are going to get hurt. You know, I'm afraid that somebody is seriously going to get hurt on this. Heather H says living in her home near Adelaide and West Howard has been terrifying ever since the day she moved in. I'm scared. I mean, when I first moved here, it was wood. I had to fight to get a metal rail. What's it going to take for somebody to die? It's all because of the position of her home. Drivers, for some reason, just can't seem to slow down coming off the long road leading to the intersection, causing them to hit the guardrail time and time again. How many accidents have you had here? I can't even tell you. This bent rail is still in place and doesn't offer much protection for when a crash potentially happens again. So far, Heather has gone to the city multiple times, yet no action has been taken in the matter. I have stop them when they've been out here. I have called them and I've had no response. You know, I mean, this is ridiculous. And with winter on the way, Heather says it's a race against the clock to prevent another tragedy. What is it gonna take for that somebody to hit my house, to hit the house I live in? Mm -hmm. yep. It doesn't make any sense, let alone I'm afraid that somebody is gonna end up in my yard, my neighbor's yard. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have money to replace our things. Now, we did try going to Pontiac City Hall to ask them where things stand, but no one could tell us any information about these repairs. Hopefully now they'll take some action. Victor Williams, Local 4. Sure hopes it, hope it gets fixed. Thanks, Victor. We appreciate it. Now to a story of neighbors coming together during a very tense situation outside their doors. It happened last night as Michigan State Police were searching for a man uh, in a suspected drug case. Sean Lay live in Corktown. Sean, they used a critical piece of technology to keep everyone updated, but this was really frightening for some folks. It was, and if you're not as close with your neighbors or you guys keep to yourself in your neighborhood, I want you to pay attention to this one. Here in Corktown, everyone looks out for each other. Last night, MSP troopers all over the place. So neighbors used a messaging app to let people know where the chase was exactly, to stay indoors, the troopers were saying, so people were messaging that, and then when it was all over. Take a look at this. Corktown is a really sort of tight-knit neighborhood, and this stuff doesn't happen in our neighborhood very often. Um, so we're just trying to figure out what's going on so everyone can be safe. Corktown is a tight-knit community. Neighbors make a point to know each other and communicate with one another instead of keeping to themselves. That paid off last night as neighbors coming together, watching a team of Michigan State Police troopers and a canine right outside their front doors. Jamie K. Walters was putting her kids to bed just after nine. I hear my husband say for everyone to get away from the front of the house because it seems like there's something going on outside. And there was. MSP was in hot pursuit of a man suspected of conducting a drug transaction nearby. Police going street to street while neighbors were talking to each other by using the group me messaging app, keeping everyone informed, even sharing video of the man running from police captured by their security cameras. It was neighbors keeping in contact with each other that helped people feel safe. And then the Michigan State Police was here and they were making people feel, you know, it was safe because they were, you felt like they were sort of taking care of it, even though we didn't know exactly what was going on. 
Let's talk about the incident. MSP confirms to me this pursuit, and they said they've identified this person. They hope to have the person in custody very soon. Let's talk about that app, GroupMe. Haven't heard of it. Checked it out. Very, very cool for neighbors to let each other know what's going on. Also good here, Devin, a couple of Detroit police officers on bikes came by, aware of what happened, rolled right over to the school to let them know to be on the lookout as well. Everyone talking at once so people could know what was going on. Back to you. That cohesion is what can define a neighborhood. Exactly right, Sean. Well, the Pontiac man is charged in the murder of a Lyft driver. 19-year-old Kamari Phillips is charged with open murder and is being held without bond tonight. Investigators say he shot and killed Dina Terrell on Friday morning. They say she was dropping Phillips off in Pontiac when he shot her in the head. Her car was found crashed near Putnam and Rundle. No word on motive, but police say it was a random act of violence. Time now for our check of the weather and all those good things we experience. Must come to an end. There's a saying about right? that. I I'm know. always bad at my sayings. That's it. All good things. You, <laughs> no, that Did was you, you nailed it. <laughs> but it's been a wonderful uh, five day stretch here, so Kim. It has. I don't know if you saw that, but the sun was just poking through yep. the clouds. Uh, we're not going to see it again for probably the next 24 hours as we do expect some rain right now on exact track radar. Nothing here. If you have evening plans, you're totally fine. There are just a few showers that are out to our west. They're right now in Grand Rapids. Also, as we move over to Muskegon, Holland, Kalamazoo and Portage all getting some rain, but that is headed our way. Take a good look at these temperatures because it will not be this warm for the next several days, maybe even longer. 73 at City Airport, 69 at Metro, Ann Arbor, Howell, and in Pontiac. Here's your evening planner. Dry for the next several hours. We might get a few sprinkles before midnight, but the heaviest rain comes after midnight through the morning commute tomorrow. But I want to give you a quick peek of this temperature trend. Well, normal's 58, so it's not bad. We'll be in the 60s, but it looks like those 70s. I don't see them. I don't see them anywhere in the, in the near future for sure. Devin and Karen. All right. Thank you, Kim. Giving children the best education they can get starts with making sure they're coming to school every day. In Detroit, students missing school on a regular basis is a massive problem. It really is. And as our Kimberly Gill has been reporting for weeks now, the district is working on solutions. She joins us live from Mumford High School, where parents and educators are about to gather to go in depth on this issue. Kim. Hi, Karen and Devin. Good evening. As you mentioned, all month long I've been doing stories highlighting this issue of chronic absenteeism in Detroit public schools. It's an issue that has only been exacerbated since the pandemic, and the district is taking some extreme measures to try to reverse those numbers. Hey, sweetie! One of the things DPSCD is doing to combat chronic absenteeism is they've hired attendance agents like Effie Harris. Good morning. She arrives early and greets each student every day, many by name. Are we riding the bus today or no? Yes. She builds a connection with the kids and identifies why they're absent or can't get to school on time. It can start off with a phone call home to say, um, mom, dad, you know, so-and-so has not been here, what's going on? The reason students miss class may have to do more with their families not having stable access to resources that will help get kids to school. That was the case with Janetta Burnett. Janetta's daughter passed away and Janetta immediately took over the care and custody of her daughter's five children. Retired and on a fixed income, Janetta didn't know how she would make ends meet or get five kids to different schools. All right, have a great day. But then she found out about the district's family resource distribution center. I ain't got nobody else, you know, like no family member, nobody really helped me. But since they came, it's like family. I know. Yeah. You know, they, they, they support me with the kids' uniform. I didn't have it. And I, I felt very blessed because when they came to me, they had nothing. Detroit is such a massive district. There is such a big need. If there wasn't a resource like this, it would be a lot harder. The Family Resource Distribution Center is a place where DPSCD families can receive resources such as school supplies, coats, water, dry goods, and hygiene products for free. It's been a struggle, a real struggle. But when you got support, that's a big help. It is. 
Janetta is just an amazing woman there. Uh, and those are just a couple of ways that the district is working to try to combat this issue of chronic absenteeism. So I'm here live at Mumford High School where this town hall is set to take place. It's from 7 to 8 tonight. It's open to the public. Uh, Superintendent Dr. Nikolai Vidi is going to be here as well as other school leaders working to tackle this problem. And you still have time to get down here. Again, it's tonight from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. If you can't make it in person, you can watch on clickondetroit.com or local four plus. Let's send it back to you, Karen and Devin in the studio. Yeah, Kimberly, now you mentioned it's open to the public. So does that mean that parents actually get a chance to ask some of the questions that are on their minds? Oh, absolutely. Yes, we're, we're going to uh, hear and get questions from the audience, uh, parents, as well as community issues, because Karen, this is this is more than just a school issue. It's a community issue. So I expect that there will be plenty of people here that will be asking questions and uh, and we welcome those. Dr. Nikolai Vidi will be here answering questions as well as our panel. You can see the setup behind me. Such an important night. All right. We appreciate it. Thanks, Kimberly. Slight decrease in Michigan's new coronavirus numbers for the week, largely holding steady. State reporting 12,167 new cases over the past seven days, averaging out to 1,700 cases a day, about 247 cases fewer than last week, but 158 new deaths being reported over those same seven days.